This is the first law of thermodynamics. It's a really important equation because it says that energy is conserved. In particular, if you add some heat energy Q to your ideal gas, that energy has to go somewhere. It has to do something. It can't just disappear into thin air. One of the things the energy can do is increase the gas molecule's internal energy, or it could cause the gas to expand and do work. We've seen also that you can take heat out of the system, you can decrease the internal energy, and you can make the gas compress so that work is being done on the gas. Today we're going to look at different types of processes and the PV graphs they make. So for example, maybe we, you know, heat this gas, but we stipulate the pressure has to stay fixed. Well, if the pressure won't increase, something has to change, the volume would increase. And on a PV graph, it looks like this. The pressure doesn't rise, the pressure doesn't decrease, it stays fixed. Maybe we'll see graphs that look like this. That's kind of the goal for today. The first one up is an isobaric process. Iso means constant, and bars refers to pressure. Normally we measure pressure in pascals, but there are other units like bars or atmospheres. The graph is pretty simple. This is an isobaric expansion. It's isobaric because the pressure doesn't rise or decrease. It's an expansion because the volume, the x-axis, gets bigger. Here's what that looks like. You heat your gas, and this, uh, this piston will raise up, but you keep the pressure constant. The other way we could do this is by having an isobaric compression. So the volume will decrease. We're going from a bigger volume down to a smaller volume. How do we do that? We cool the gas, and we let that piston slide down. The next process is isovolumetric, which means constant volume. The way we make this happen is, well, we could have isovolumetric heating. And what we do is see how the volume doesn't increase. We don't move to the right. On the x-axis, the volume doesn't decrease. We are going to fix that piston. We hold it in place so it can't move. When we add heat, Q, we raise the pressure. This is isovolumetric heating. But we could also have the line go down. That would be isovolumetric cooling. The environment is at a, a cooler temperature than the system, the gas. So heat exits from the gas. And as the heat goes out, the piston can't move, so the pressure drops. The next graph is isothermal, and this is one where the process has a constant temperature. Now, isothermal graphs look like an inverse curve, and I'm kind of exaggerating the shape here, but you'll see why in a second. Why would an isothermal process have an inverse shape? Well, we know that PV equals nRT. We're talking about an ideal gas as our system. This is the equation of state for an ideal gas. But if temperature is constant, well, R, the ideal gas constant, is also not going to change. The number of moles is constant. Gas doesn't leak out of the piston or out of the chamber. So the whole right side is a constant when temperature stays fixed. If we divide both sides by V, we get an inverse relationship. Now, you can have uh, a temperature which would produce this type of graph, but you might also have a higher temperature. And if you have a higher fixed temperature, the graph is higher up. If you have a lower fixed temperature, the graph is a little bit lower. That's the difference between these different curves. The last process for us to look at is adiabatic. This is one where no energy is transferred into the gas or out of the gas. Now, we have to be careful. What we mean by energy is heat energy. What does this look like on a graph? It's almost like an inverse curve, but it's much steeper. How do we make a process like this occur? Well, you could take your gas and you could just put it inside, you know, thermo flask or what, whatever the best thermos is, something that's super insulating. Heat can't get in, heat energy can't get out. But that's not very realistic. So what you might do instead, ready? You grab that piston, and you slam it down as fast as you can. What happens here is the gas heats up really fast. 
but you went so quickly, there is no time for that heat energy to get transferred out into the, surra uh, the surrounding environment. That would be an adiabatic compression. So which way would the line point? It would point to the left, decreasing the volume. Or you grab your piston, and you pull it up really fast, and the gas cools, but we haven't had any time for heat energy to transfer into the gas from the outside. That's why adiabatic processes typically have to be done very quickly. This is almost the opposite of an isothermal process. In isothermal processes, you don't want to go fast because you don't want the temperature to change. Isothermal processes, you have to pull and push that thing very slowly so that the system, the gas, is always in thermal equilibrium with the surroundings. You don't want this getting too hot or getting too cold. There's one equation that I want to show you for adiabatic processes. It's almost the same equation for isothermal processes. But instead of PV equals a constant, it's P times V to the 5 thirds. There's a good reason why it's 5 thirds and not some other power, but we don't really study that in the SL course. Here's the important thing you have to know. This equation can be used to solve problems, but only if we have a monoatomic gas. So it's not hydrogen 2. There aren't two hydrogens bonded together. That's a diatomic gas. We only have one molecule, uh, one atom per molecule. The last thing I want to do is summarize all of this in a nice chart. Here is the first law of thermodynamics. We already know what causes the internal energy to change. A change in temperature. And we already know what causes work to be done. A change in volume. Although we have to be careful, this equation is only valid if the pressure is constant. When pressure changes and volume changes, we have to apply it by using the area under the graph. So let's go through every one of the processes we've learned. Isobaric, what's that mean? Pressure is constant. And we can't really modify the first law of thermodynamics. Isovolumetric, what's that mean? Volume is constant. But if the volume doesn't change, then no work is done. Isothermal, what does that mean? Temperature is constant. And if the temperature doesn't change, then there is no change in internal energy. Finally, we have adiabatic. That's where heat is not transferred into or out of the gas. So the first law of thermodynamics looks like this.